What's up guys, Sean here from Reaction Outdoors. Um, so we had a little technical difficulty earlier when we were doing live video and I was trying to do uh, both YouTube video and the live video at the same time. That didn't work out. So we're gonna get a more refined, better YouTube video for you guys. And then uh, I'm gonna make some corrections on some miss uh, speaking I did earlier too. So. Um, if you've seen a live video, you know what to expect. If you haven't, this is a gear list breakdown uh, thus far uh, for a do-it-yourself elk hunt in Idaho uh, for the Panhandle uh, area, which includes about nine different units. So without further ado, I'm going to get into just a little bit about the hunt itself. Um, I'm a Michigan boy, so we're going to be traveling uh, myself and my buddies Jake and Jason, three of us are gonna be traveling from Michigan starting September 2nd uh, for a DIY elk hunt in the back country of Idaho. Uh, we're gonna be staging out of Sandpoint, Idaho and hunting along uh, the Montana border area up and down a range of about two to 300 miles of we've scouted out and have some spots picked out. So uh, with that being said, um, this is just the kind of preliminary gear list I don't have everything I need yet. We have less than 50 days until we leave for our trip, so I'm gonna be getting some stuff in here soon. But this is just kind of to help you guys out if you're doing the same type of thing. I've seen a lot of posts about uh, folks kind of doing the same thing, do-it-yourself hunts, and they've been getting their gear together as well, so I thought maybe I'd do a post to see if we're all on the same page and uh, we can help each other out. So, uh, my experiences as far as backcountry camping goes. I have a lot of experience with backcountry camping in the West, um, in Michigan obviously, and in the Northeast of the United States during like winter time, uh, fall time, things like that. So this is kind of my gear list based off of those experiences. So uh, obviously with basic stuff in mind, we have our base layer system here. This is what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using the Under Armour Cold Gear um, base layer system. This is the 4.0 and 3.0 uh, base layer series. I use this all during the whitetail season um, for the late doe season and the late archery season that we had in Michigan. It worked great. Um, actually, I found at times that I was a little bit overheated with it when I was moving a lot. So that's probably going to be what I'm going to be wearing later in the September season in Idaho. Um, that's not to say that it won't snow earlier because that has happened. I've been there, I've done that. So that's just kind of what I'll have on hand with me. Uh, probably won't be packing it the first half of the season, but like I said, who knows? There might be some days forecasted where I'll have it in my pack. Um, as far as simple base layers and stuff go, wool underwear, wool socks. Everybody pretty much knows that. I'm not going to show you my underwear. And uh, here's a couple pairs of socks, just for example. So there's that. Um, going more into like the cold weather stuff, I have here is a simple down jacket I've had for about three or four years now. Um, it's done me well, um, held up pretty pretty well, and uh, it's a nice light jacket it packs into its own pocket, so it's good. It's good for uh, base layer. Um, obviously, I'm gonna have some sort of rain gear or something on top of that that um, gives some sort of you know dry factor or whatever. So um, that being said. Uh, my rain gear I'm going to go with is the Thunder here, Thunderhead series from Sitka. I have not uh, received that yet, uh, but I do have a few items from Sitka so far that I've used during turkey season here in Michigan. Um, for a top, I have the Core Midweight Quarter Zip. Um, it's great in a lot of range temperatures. Uh, I've used it from 40 degrees all the way up to 80 degrees. Um, obviously, like 60 or 70 degrees is probably its upper limit, the 80 degree day that I've worn it in. Uh, I had it fully zipped or fully unzipped and uh, it was pretty hot, but still very breathable. Um, they do claim it has a uh, scent eliminator uh, feature in this. Um, I didn't really notice a difference between that and other like athletic gear I've used. Um, it definitely smells better than Under Armour when you get that sweaty, but um, as far as the scent eliminator goes, I'm not sure how well that works. So. As far as the pants go, these I'll be wearing pretty much every day out in Idaho. These are the Apex pants, new this year from Sitka. They have a removable knee pad. Articulation is very good. 
Um, the whole pant is super breathable, very durable, and uh, I went through a few briar bushes with this, thorn bushes and things of that nature, and they held up really well, no rips, no tears. Um, obviously, they're not like a heavy-duty mountain pant, but they're a great everyday pant. I plan on pretty much wearing these for you know 24 days straight. So we'll see how those hold up, and after the fact, I'll probably give you guys a good, a good idea how they work. So um, going from there, <clears throat> got my boots. I opted for the Solomon uh, Quest 4D in Gore-Tex. These boots are super comfortable. I've put about 25 miles on these boots so far. Um, I've had a few buddies that have had them in the past that have re reported having some water uh, proofing issues with them later on in the life of the boot. So far they hold up great in wet weather. Um, they're super comfortable, great ankle support, very firm um, sole, and I think they'll do very well in a mountainous terrain. Um, they held up great at Boyne at the Total Archery Challenge. They've held, they've held up great um, on my hikes that I've used to break them in with. So I uh, have no complaints with them. I'm very excited to try them out in Idaho. So continuing on with the camping stuff, um, this is kind of just a limited uh, view of what I have for my gear for the camping. But um, right down to the sleeping bag, I have a Kelty Down Ignite sleeping bag. It's rated to 20 degrees. Um, that's its comfort level. Um, it has a um, level down to 10 degrees um, for like a safety factor, I guess you could say. But I've camped in this down to 15 degrees comfortably um, with the right um, sleeping pad. So it's got dry down technology. So even if you do get a little moisture on it, it's gonna still keep the, the, uh, the, the, the factor or the, what am I trying to say? It's gonna keep the, it's gonna keep its warmth. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's good. It's good to see I've had it for about five years, so no complaints there, no changes there. Most everything I'm using camping wise uh, is pretty much a complete um, transition, basically. I'm just taking everything I use backcountry camping, I'm gonna use it backcountry hunting. Most of my gear I use backcountry camping is, is built for light and fast. So I'm not worried about having the extra weight of the hunting equipment. <clears throat> so that being said, I use a Neo Air Thermarest. It uh, doesn't have a huge R value, but it's very comfortable, very light, inflates to about two inches, very quick, quickly inflatable. So I have that. I'll have a couple other sitting pads, Thermarest that I have, but uh, that'll, those will just be kind of backups in case this one pops a pole or something. I'll keep those in the truck. But aside from that, I also do plan on most of the nights, hopefully, weather permitting um, and bugs permitting, mostly bugs, not too much worried about the rain, but uh, I'll be sleeping out of a hammock with a tarp system, so I'm really excited to try that out. I have uh, a uh, Eno hammock, um, so it should be, should be work, should work great, should be good. Uh, from there, as a backup, I have a Coppin or Copin, however you want to pronounce it, backcountry one person tent. Um, it works great. I mean, I've used it for the last five or six years so far. I've used it up in Mount Washington for a winter camp. I've used it in Pacomon Falls in the winter. Um, it does have some condensation issues. Obviously, the three-season tent, not meant for winter camping, but I use it outside. It's uh, normal temperatures, so whatever. But I'm probably just going to have this in the truck in case it's got some acclimate, we got some acclimate weather, inclement weather um, forecasted. I'll have it and I'll be able to pack it in. But as most people know, it's kind of a pain in the ass to pack in a whole tent. I'd rather just have a tarp and a nice uh, bivy system or something like that. So um, along the lines here with the uh, camping, I have my jet boil system. Uh, for those that don't know what the jet boil system is, it's basically just an, it's an isobutane fuel canister um, that rapidly boils your water. It boils water in less than three minutes. It's great for using mountain houses or backpackers pantry meals. Um, you can boil your water, you can cook your freeze-dried meals, and then later you can make a nice cider drink or hot cocoa. So definitely a morale booster in camp, having some warm beverages, uh, making some broth or something like that. So carry, uh, carry those bouillon cubes or something. Um, so it's great coming back to camp after a long day of hiking and making yourself a warm meal. So, uh, got my headlamp here, it's a Petzl headlamp. Uh, it's very bright, has a couple different stages to it, so it's just something simple, nothing crazy. Uh, 
takes AA batteries, I believe, so I'm gonna have plenty of those because headlamps, as we all know, run out of battery life very quickly. All right, so to continue on with the gear I'm using, I'm using a marsupial uh, vinyl harness. These are made in America, out of Arizona, I believe. I read a lot of reviews on Go Hunt about these packs, these vinyl harnesses. Decided to pull the trigger. I'm very happy with it. Um, use it as a magnetic um, system to secure the flap here. Uh, keeps my Vortex Diamondbacks nice and secure inside. I'm using the 10 by 42 Diamondbacks. Um, they work great. I used them on my turkey hunt this uh, spring and I've used them in Total Archery Challenge and had no complaints with them. They're a great binocular for the price. Um, the pack itself, the pouch itself, it uh, is limited on space a little bit. You have a uh, spot here for maybe some tools or for your tag in the front of the zipper. On each side you have some elastic pouches that you can keep um, your call in or maybe um, like myself I carry a uh, uh, thumb release or a hinge release if you have something you can keep in there um, that will be secure or maybe a set of allen wrenches. But aside from that if you're carrying um, a range finder or a GPS or a radio pouch you're going to have to get the separate pouch accessories and that just goes on the straps here. Um, no big deal. A lot of people will use them like that, so I'll probably be getting that in the future as well. Speaking of range finders, um, went with the Vortex Ranger 1300 series. Great little range finder for the price. Um, it ranges very accurately compared to other Vortex range finders that my, uh, my buddy was using a 1500 series at the Archery Challenge. Um, it seemed to outperform um, lower end uh, range finders at the Archery Challenge too, so that was, um, I guess, you know what you pay for. So good to know that Vortex is coming out with good products for the price, they have a great warranty. Um, so hopefully I never have to use it, but if I do, I know they're backing it up 100%. Uh, mentioned in the, uh, kind of in the gear there that uh, I'm using a Jimmy T, a Fletcher Jimmy T hinge release here, uh, or a thumb release. Haven't had any problems with it so far. It's a great little release. Um, pretty budget friendly, they're like 70 or 80 bucks, so they're not super expensive by any means. Um, so, uh, from there, <clears throat> excuse me, got a Prime uh, Synergy. Um, it's, I think it's a hybrid, I'm not sure. It's a smaller uh, of the axle axle versions. Um, so got this from Long Range Archery in Holland, Michigan. Great group of guys over there set me up with uh, everything I need. Got myself a black gold ascent sight. Got a 365 stabilizer in the back. Got a Vapor Trail Gen 6 uh, drop away rest. And I'm um, using a Trophy Ridge uh, quiver system here that hold my Easton FMJ injections. So that's pretty much my setup for the hunt itself. Very happy with this bow. Made in Michigan, couldn't be happier with it. Shoots great. I've got it set at 70 pounds. Um, should be more than enough to take down an elk in any other big game I might um, you know, encounter in the future. So with broadheads, I'm um, using the NAP Big Nasty Broadheads Deep Six insert. These are great broadheads. I've shot them up to 60 yards so far with great results as far as grouping goes. They seem to fly very well. Um, they're very sharp, keep their edge. They are a uh, sharpenable uh, broadhead, so I'm just gonna bring a sharpening stone with me if I encounter any issues or any, but I have six of them, so if I, for some reason, drop a broadhead or hit a shoulder blade or something like that, I have five more that I can back it up with. All right, so continuing on with the rest of the hunting, uh, minded stuff here. We got a Yeti 125 quart here. Um, this is solely meant for packing uh, meat back across the country. Um, it'll be also used obviously with the quartered meat. We'll put that in there to take to um, our uh, freezer, our, our cooler rather, um, in Sandpoint and then uh, hopefully have processed meat on the way back. So got that. My buddies Jake and Jason also have a couple coolers they'll be bringing, so um, you're gonna want anywhere between two and 250 quarts of, of cooler space for your meat uh, for an elk for a full size bowl. So um, this Yachty uh, hopper here is an 18. It's just meant for food sandwiches on the way there. Um, 
you know, potentially if we have any overflow, I guess we can put some meat in there too, but that's pretty much that. We're gonna go into um, the camera stuff now too. This hunt's gonna be fully filmed. The whole journey is gonna be filmed um, from day one, Michigan, all the way to day, uh, you know, 31 or whatever it is gonna be on the way back to Michigan in October. So, like I said, the season is from September 6th to September 30th. We plan on taking full advantage of the whole month. Um, hopefully we tag out early and then we can, you know, have a little bit of fun and maybe come back to our families sooner rather than later. But as far as filming goes, um, right here in front of you is a Nikon D3400. This is going to be mainly just for photos and for B-roll footage. Um, it doesn't take the greatest video just because the sound quality isn't the best and you can't attach an external microphone. But it does shoot in HD, it does shoot good video, has good video quality. Um, the stabilization system internally isn't very good, um, but as far as picture quality, that's really good. The lenses, are interchangeable lenses, it comes with an 18 to 55 millimeter and a 70 to 300 millimeter lens. This is the kit that it comes with. You can buy it at Best Buy or Target or whatever. So I haven't invested into um, a better lens system yet. Um, I also have a GoPro. Pretty much everybody has a GoPro. This is an older one. It's a Hero 3 Plus. Um, still shoots great. Shoots HD video. Um, probably won't be using this a whole lot. Maybe for some like. I don't even know what I can tell you what I'm going to use it for, but I'll have it just in case I want to use it. So I have that. And then the main footage is going to be off of what I'm filming this with is a Panasonic Lumix. I believe it's a G300 series. Um, shoots uh, anywhere uh, from 1080p through 30 frames a second up to 4K at 30 frames a second. It also shoots 240 frames a second slow mo video um, and VGA, and it can shoot HD. Um, 120 frames of slow-mo. So this is going to be our primary um, camera for filming the hunt and it's going to, it's going to, it's really great for an outdoorsman. It's a single lens fixed camera. It's a 20 to 600 millimeter um, actual optical zoom, um, no digital zoom. So it takes great quality long distance photos and video. It's water and dust resistant. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be great for the backcountry. Um, battery life seems to be pretty good so far. I'm using a 32 gigabyte memory card and it seems like I get about um, HD, I get about 45 minutes worth of footage for each 32 gigabyte card shooting in 1080p at 60 frames a second. So definitely going to have to plan accordingly because I do plan on filming a lot of uh, content while we're out there. So it does have a really good internal stabilization system. Um, I do plan on getting a uh, external roadie mic for it, as well as a gimbal system, just so you have that nice smooth footage for you guys to enjoy. And it's not the Blair Witch Project out there shooting elk. So um, this, that's pretty much it for the camera setup. Um, I'm sure you guys notice I've left a few things out that are kind of critical. Um, I mentioned in my live video I was going to get a Sitka. I said the 5600 series. What I meant was the Mountain Hauler 6200 series. It's a new pack by them. It has a load shelf. It also had 6200 cubic inches of internal room for gear and stuff like that. Um, aside from the load shelf, I'll be getting that from Sitka. Um, I'll be getting the Thunderhead out, uh, outerwear series, the Gore-Tex, um, top and bottom for my rain gear. That will be over my layering system of my Under Armour cold gear and my down jacket and my apex pants so um, you know I might have forgot some little small stuff here and there um, gaiters I, I have a pair of ankle gaiters just for wet wet times and and maybe muddy situations and stuff like that um, I have those handy just in case um, I don't know I'll be releasing some more in-depth I guess gear stuff here shortly but I want to give you guys a good um, idea of what we're going to be using um, to kind of help anybody else that's got to do the same thing, do it yourself, elk hunt out west. It's, and this can go for any uh, do it yourself, big, uh, big game hunt out west, mule deer, things like that. So hopefully, if you have any questions, just please drop them in the comments and we'll answer them. Um, if you have any suggestions, please uh, let us know because we're new at this. This is going to be my first big game hunt out west. Like I said, I'm a Michigan boy. I'm coming from Michigan, you know, whitetail country and stuff like that. So this isn't just going into your camp and waking up five in the morning to go sit in your stand. This is a lot different. So if anybody out there that has suggestions, please leave them in the comments, shoot us a message. Um, and we appreciate all feedback. So thanks a lot.
and I hope you guys have a great day.